Hello everyone, welcome to Reality Paint. I got some exciting new, well, an exciting new feature to show you. It's called the Transmorph Chisel, and I'm going to show you exactly what that does. First off, you have to get the latest update. It's version 1.0.4.4. You can get that by clicking uh, in the menu, the help, uh, check for updates. And so what this does is it allows you to morph this one object into the shape of another and uh, it's not a hundred percent dummy proof you might you have to do you consider a few little things but otherwise it works extremely well it's uh, somewhat of a, a magical feature if you will uh, I don't like to drop this word very much but it's somewhat of a game changer because this tool is going to is the foundation for another set of tools which are going to uh, be able to you know open up a whole new world and what, what uh, the first uh, uh, we have a, a new feature, a uh, new tool coming out, which is going to be a standalone product or built to, and built into Reality Paint. It's going to be called the uh, Texture Transform, and what it allows you to do is to take textures from one character and tr and transform them to another character, and going perfectly across UV seams, the whole deal, high resolution, 4K textures, no problem. And so, uh, yeah, and so. A key ingredient of this tool for it to do this because you have completely different geometry. Let's look at the wireframe here. Hit O, for a hotkey for wireframe. Uh, you know, it's like there's a much uh, the geometry is dramatically different from these objects. This here is Roxy, by the way. Uh, but uh, we can also do well, we're doing this for Dawn, uh, which is this new character out by Highwire 3D. Uh, so uh, and that's actually the first character conversion that's going to be supported is Victoria 4 to Dawn. Right, so but right now we're just using Roxy here, uh, and uh, so um, number one, the actual uh, the, you know the, the the physical geometry of the model is different. The UV mapping is different. You have UV seams, different uh, uh, you know uh, texture layouts, the whole deal. So uh, but this uh, utility is essentially going to be uh, it does everything automatically. You just select the source file, select the destination file, maybe one option or two. You click go, and it gives you a new texture set. But uh, what we decided to do is take the, the, the sort of the tools that we needed to build that, the, that new product and put them back into Reality Paint so all your users can use them yourself for doing more complex projects on your own. And uh, so um, and the key ingredient to this is we need to morph one model into the shape of another model so they perfectly overlap well as perfectly as possible, right? And so uh, that's where this transmorph chisel comes in. So let me show you how that works. So uh, what I'm going to do is, first off, I, I have this thing moved over to the side. So if I just select all, Control A, and then I uh, uh, navigate transform tools, move object, reset position, right? Pause. That's for position. And now I have them so they're overlapping each other. Now if you look a little closely here, we're going to go in here and uh, notice how here's the nose uh, from one, here's the nose from the other, one's a little higher. Right, uh, the lips aren't quite lined up. Uh, let me see. Look at the back, of the head. You can see here, right, how this this one bulges out a little more than that. And we're going to use this tool to just sort of snap all that stuff together, and while keeping the geometry really clean. So let's start it. Uh, so first off, we need to uh, use this picker tool with the object, and we select the one that we want to use as our source, like. Uh, like not the one we want to deform, the one we want to deform too. So we're going to select uh, Victoria 4, and it's a good V4 here. And so I'm going to choose Deformation Tools, Transmorph Chisel, and then I click Setup Reference. So now it takes that geometry, puts it into a special data structure, and then you can forget about it. So I'm going to go Edit, Hide Selected Surface while that's selected, and now I just see Roxy. And now I got this uh, tool here. Now let me check my parameters. Okay. And so uh, all I have to do is like is just start clicking and dragging on the surface. So I'm gonna make this brush a little smaller here. And now watch the nose. Like see how this little bump here, and watch these shapes. Watch as I click and drag, how this nose starts to reshape. All right. And then it, it takes sometimes even a few iterations. You see this little motion in there until it settles down. And let's do that a few more times. All right. And there we go. And now. You know what, I'm going to undo this first because I want to use this with symmetry. Use symmetry. Tool control mirror symmetry, use symmetry. So I can do both sides at the same time. It makes life a lot easier and you want it to be symmetric at the end of the day. So here we go. And so we notice the brow shape here sort of coming out. That was dramatically different. Look how much that's coming out. And 
And what you'll see is the, the reason why, um, as you do it, if you notice, uh, uh, let me find another part here. Uh, okay, and there we go. Uh, sometimes, like, it, like, see how it kind of it takes a little while to settle down. Where you do it a few times, it moves a lot, and then it moves a little, a little, and then it's done. And look at that. See how this is snapping in? That is because we have a deformation tool, transmorph. Uh, post unwarp and what this is because we have this unwarp chisel and which this does is it helps if you get some geometry that's all bunched up but you you made a morph and it's dramatically different size shape but if you use the unwarp chisel it will sort of re it'll uh, it'll retain sort of the uh, the original uh, topology if you will of the wireframe while keeping the large scale shape of the object so what this happens is with the transmorph it does that right after the transmorph for every little iteration, so it's constantly keeping the geometry in in a good shape. It's trying to keep its uh, its original sort of uh, you know wireframe structure while conforming to the shape of the new object, right? So it's it's doing two things at once, and that's why you kind of get that little settling down process, and it kind of iterates. It goes back and forth, back and forth, until you get a nice shape. Now look, look how much that. Back, okay, I'm gonna undo a few steps here. Look at the back of that head, and how you just. All you do is this, and it's conforming to the shape of the original of V4. And so, and to do a complete character, you're going to want it to basically, uh, essentially, you want to morph, uh, manually morph the parts so they mostly overlap with each other, and without worrying about the minor details. And you let this tool sort of snap everything to pick place and clean up the geometry. It really works nice. So. Like I said, if you wanted this, if you might have to move the head up a little bit, you might have to move the arms a bit, and don't worry about the subtle geometry at all. You can do it in kind of messy, because this will, it just naturally cleans this. This post on warp just cleans up the geometry as you go. So that's why I say it's kind of like magic. It just kind of works. Uh, so here we go. And there's going to be situations where it you'll have to sort of uh, understand what's going on and and do a little like a lot of subtle tweaking like ears for example I'm not going to do them now because they take a little bit more work but you're going to have to make sure you line up the ears kind of good and uh, and when you're doing it there's like little bits here are kind of close to each other so it'll get a little confused so you, you'll you have to uh, soften uh, do a little bit of manual work in there to get some of these parts roughly lined up first and then transmorph them so uh, I'll save that for a more advanced video but for now or you can figure it out but I'm just showing you the general usage of this tool. And so here, look at the jawline. It's kind of, okay, anyway, so you can go like this around. And I'm just doing, you can do it more large scale too. If you're pretty confident that things are already mostly lined up, you can just make this 20 here. You can set hidden surface removal to none, so go straight through. And you can just go straight through like this. Be careful though, if you have internal geometry, like, uh, like you know, the teeth and all that, they can get all messed up if you're, going straight through the model and you can't see them, you don't know what's happening. Uh, so here we go. And let's just do that whole bit. Let's just get all that. And like I said, all this hidden geometry here is removed from this uh, thing because I wanted to show you the, the general usage. That gets a little complicated, you have to use. Uh, it's best to use display groups. Uh, where you make a selection and then you display group and then you can create these so then you can hide them so you can make a, a display group for all the hidden geometry and then you can hide it away so then when you're doing this stuff it's not getting affected uh, so yeah anyway let's uh, let's just take a look now let's just unhide um, our V4 and see how well this conforms now you can see now there's a lot less bulging through here it's bulging through a little more that's mainly because that the, the the polygon difference, these are much bigger polygons, so this is really, really subtle. If I move this, you'll see it really quickly disappears If in the depth direction. Like if I go like this, see how quickly that just appears because it's just, that's just like a really subtle difference here, right? And so, um, but yeah, if you notice here, let's take a look at the nose, all right? Look at, look at that whole nose is pretty much snapped into shape, right? And so let's again, let's go over here and move it aside. Whoops, I got the wrong. Uh, well, actually, that's good. Use the depth here. So let's move one, the next. See, I'm using the depth here, so uh, just to illustrate, 
So I'm moving in the depth uh, direction. Uh, see here, go move object. Uh, so uh, if I click here and I just do, you can see, look at that, how that, that shape is pretty much the same, right? Doesn't get much better than that. So again, like I said, I believe this, this feature is a game changer and it's gonna open up a whole new sort of uh, set of tools that we can do based on this, where we, you know, you're taking stuff from one object and putting it onto the other object back and forth. Uh, and like I said, this, this new uh, tr uh, texture transformer uh, utility, which is coming out uh, within the next few weeks, is uh, it's going to be included in free for Reality Paint. So don't worry about that. And if you just want that feature alone, then you can buy it separately. Uh, then that's cool too. So anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you find it informative. Uh, and uh, yeah, please stay tuned. A lot more videos to come. And uh, see you next time.